in 1.3. Now we're going to talk about aquatic biomes. The learning objective for this one is to describe the global distribution and principal environmental aspects of aquatic biomes, which, yes, is word for word the same thing as the last one, but now with aquatic. So we have freshwater biomes and we have marine biomes. So freshwater, is fresh water, no salt, includes streams, rivers, ponds, and lakes. They are a vital source of drinking water. They are characterized by salinity, depth, and water flow. Streams and rivers are the flowing water ones. So they originate typically from things like underground springs or runoff from rain or snow. Because they're constantly flowing, it's not great for, you know, like floating plants or something like that. So they depend on the input of organic matter, um, and the decomposition of that to form the base of the food chain. The turbulence of the water uh, then also determines how much oxygen can be dissolved in the water. So let's say places that are, like, you have a lot of rapids, they get a lot more oxygen than if it's, you know, very slow moving. And that, of course, then determines what kind of species can be supported, because, spoiler alert, things need oxygen. Lakes and ponds are the standing water ones. Uh, so you have... Uh, so, like, the, the, real quick, the like, difference between, like, stream and a river and, like, in a pond is just the size, and there's kind of no real, like determination like at this point this lake is now a pond or this pond is now a lake it's weird but just know that they're either standing or they're they're moving it's not going to be a specific like number to know all right the lakes and ponds are broken up into distinct regions mostly distinct you have the littoral uh region which is basically the shoreline it's very shallow you have the um, most growth of algae and shallow, or like, I call them like emergent plants, like plants that can grow in the water. Limnetic is the name given to the region where light can still reach. Once it's too dark, for, or like just too far for light to, to go down, we call that the profundal zone. And then the benthic is the very, very bottom, the, the, the muddy, icky, gross part. Rain biomes are saltwater. They include oceans, coral reefs, marshlands, and estuaries. Algae in these marine biomes support or supply a large portion of the Earth's oxygen, and they also take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So we're big fans of those guys. In the ocean, they also have distinct zones. You want to know it's very similar. In fact, it's actually maybe even simpler than the lake zones. Um, if you can just remember benthic zones, they both have that in common. With the oceans, there is the photic zone, which is where light is, and the aphotic, aphotic zone, which is where no light is. Um, there are some like, like diagrams that may give you more information than that, but I feel like that's just the important parts to know. Either light or no light, because that's going to determine what organisms can grow there and stuff. Coral reefs, the most diverse marine biome. They are very important habitats. Um, for a lot, a lot of critters, and they are in danger, of course. So corals are these really cool little animals. They have an external skeleton of calcium carbonate, and we don't typically think about these guys as animals, but they are. Just look it up, and it'll tell you why it's an animal. But the big thing with coral is that they cannot live by themselves. They depend on a mutualistic relationship with algae to get food. So the algae helps to do that, you know, photosynthesis thing, providing it with all the, the cool byproducts of the photosynthesis, and the algae just like, hey man, can I just have a place to stay? And Coral's like, sure man, you know, you stay here as long as you want. But then, algae get kind of freaked out, and then they can die because of low pH and high sea temperature, and so then without that algae, the, the coral will die as well. We call it coral bleaching because when the algae initially die, or are expelled, um, they just, they don't have any color because it's the algae that gives them their pretty color. Um, and they're not dead at this point, but they're dying. So if we have a, a coral reef that's been recently bleached, it can come back to life, but it's very unlikely. Um, because it's like these conditions that are stressing these, these algae out, they don't go away. Marsh sands are 
We're going for wetlands. We're very familiar with these guys in, um, in Florida here. They're found near lakes and streams. They are an important habitat and they can also protect um, coast from erosion. So they kind of provide like a little buffer zone. Estuaries are when freshwater rivers meet the salt water, and that creates uh, brackish water, like half salt, half half uh, fresh. Because of this, this condition of the water, it's a nursing ground for a lot of fish, especially fish that you know we eat. It filters water and also provides a coastal buffer from storms. This is also obvious, but the distribution of our marine natural resources, like fish, also vary because of some combination of salinity, depth, turbidity, nutrient availability, and temperature. Again, the biggest thing to take away from this is that because the biome determines what can grow there and what can come from there, when we when these biomes are changing, the, the, the climate of these biomes are changing, it's changing what can come from there. And it changes, you know, economy, food availability, all that stuff. Um, I just thought this was a pretty cool chart, like where the most different types of fish come. But that's, uh, that's me. All right, now it's your turn just to describe the global distribution and principal environmental aspects of aquatic biomes.